I just wanted to get better, bro. I wanted to be at the top with all these athletes that made it to the top. You know, I wanted to have the feeling of being able to keep going, keep going, keep going, and just keep working hard and unlocking all these different skills. It, it like drives me because it's something that is not normal. It's not like, it's like, I'm not just somebody that went after something that was already like super popular. It's like something that as I was growing, the sport was also growing. And me seeing the sport grow was also making me want to grow. I think that's what it is. So my name's Angel. Um, I'm from here, from Tucson, Arizona, and I'm 23. I feel like I've always been like associated with the whole, any type of sport. Like as a little kid, um, I was always skateboarding. Uh, slowly started like playing uh, soccer. I went into high school, continued to play soccer. I played for like, you know, club teams and I played high school. I took like soccer very serious to the point where I wanted to go pro. I, I started looking into academies like Real Salt Lake. Around the time that I was trying to like become pro with soccer, that's when I started like lifting. I, I realized that in order to like get better at soccer, I also had to like somehow stay like fit. And yeah, I was, I was like, bulking up a little bit gaining size and then one day bro my brother just shows me this dude and it's this bald dude bro and he's like doing one arm pull-ups and etc like a uh, handstand push-up and it was frank madrano bro yeah and i'm like bro like how like how is that possible you know dude is flipping his hat backwards <laughs> you know yeah. but uh to me bro like that that was the first time that i saw some somebody doing like something crazy with like their own body weight yeah and that caught my attention bro and every day bro i would go on youtube and i would watch that video that same exact video yeah. bro. Like, i would watch it and i would watch it and i would try it and it was the hardest thing like, i was like i think i can try this and no bro i couldn't yeah. i couldn't and then uh, I saw that on his Instagram, he had like a whole workout program uh, available. So then I bought his beginner program and I, I started following it. And I was still playing soccer, so I would like do my training and then I would go to my soccer practice. After uh, high school, bro, it's very hard to go pro. Like you have to go to college in order to get scouted, you know, by the leagues and all. And I didn't go to college. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, I was always attracted to the adrenaline, something that gave me adrenaline and that was sports. Yeah. So I started doing that, like following his workout program and then slowly started doing less of the soccer. Bro, I one time there was a fit expo in LA. It was Battle of the Bars when Sergio like knocked his tooth out. Uh -huh. Keep in mind, I didn't know too much about freestyle yet. Like I knew about like just reps, sets and like planche we drive overnight there we get there in the morning at like 5 a.m and we go to the fit expo and then i'm just walking around and then i see chris Heria, and i'm like oh bro like that's chris Heria, you know <laughs> yeah. and then i walk over and i see the setup of battle of the bars and i see everybody like just having fun bro just swinging on the bars doing 360 and i'm like I, th I think i might be able to do that and this is when i was like first barely like learning straddle planche bro so like, I was like, I was nervous. I was like, should I go in there? Like, I don't know if I'm allowed to go in there. And I just said like, fuck it, like I'm gonna go in there. And I went in there and they didn't tell me anything. So I was like, oh, okay, like I guess everyone's allowed in here. Yeah. And I got under P-bars and I tried like a out sit to like a, a, a very bad straddle plant, bro. And then I just tried to like go to a handstand and that was it. After that, I got out and I went and sat at the bleachers, bro, because they had bleachers. And that's where like all the spectators like watched. And then the battle started and then I watched J-Bay against Anthony. Mm -hmm. They battled and I, I watched JQ versus Patrick. And then I left after those two battles. But after seeing them, uh, those four athletes battle, I was like, bro, like, this is what I want to do. As soon as I got back, I told my dad that I wanted to build a bar. 
I was like, like that, I want to build a bar. So he was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I was like, let's, so we went to Home Depot, bought the wood, uh, and that's got the, the middle. That's the bar that we sesh on now, bro. And then I hit up uh, J-Bay. I would follow J-Bay on Instagram. And he told me, he was like, bro, there's a cat out there, bro, like named Anthony, that maybe you can hit up and link up with him like in the meantime, so you can train with him. I was like, bro, this is a guy that I like, I saw competing, bro. And I was like, I messaged him and I reached out to him. I was like, there's no way this dude is gonna reply to me. Like, this dude's dope. And yeah, bro, like within a couple of like minutes or hours, he replied, he's like, what's up, bro? Yeah, we should link up and train. And I said, say less. And I drove up to Phoenix because he lived just two hours from me. I, I basically had nothing, bro, but I, I was intrigued by, you know, when I saw it and I wanted to learn. Thanks to Anthony, bro, like, he taught me like all the basics, bro. Yeah. Like 360, shrimp, alley you, 540, all the basics. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So Anthony is the one that introduced me to my first comp. He was like, hey bro, there's this annual thing with the, the Venice Beach Jam. I was like, I was like, cool bro, like I'm down. Signed up for it. We went we went over there, it was around May. So we get there and I feel the bar. It's a little bit different because we seshed on the bounty bar, the one in the middle of everything. And I won my first round. And then the second round, I went up against Danny G. I was like, there's no way I can do this. I just didn't know what to do. And I was super tired. I got fatigued, like my forearms were like tight. And uh, yeah, I ended up losing. And that was like my first experience. I was super upset. I was so sad. I was like, damn, like, I don't know if this is for me. And then I saw after that, I saw everybody else compete and I saw how crazy it got. And I saw, I saw the finals and everything. And like, it just like, it lined me up. It was like something inside me like was like turned on. Yeah. And it was like, this is so sick, bro. I just wanted to get better, bro. I wanted a, be at the top with all these athletes that made it to the top you know i wanted to have the feeling of being able to keep going keep going keep going and just keep working hard and unlocking all these different skills that i saw that day that i was like that's crazy like how is he doing that like without any effort i want to say the miami competition the world cup that one uh Going back, it was the Exalt one. That one was a, a good one for me. And then I really liked the Battle of the Bars one with Karash. Like that one was a, a one that where I also pushed myself like yeah. to my very best. For sure, to start off with is injuries, bro. I feel like injuries, I... I took them serious, but at the same time I didn't, and that was my mistake. It was like, I would feel like, you know, that I was injured, but then at the same time I was like, oh, like, it's fine, let me still do this. And I would still push myself to do it, even if I felt pain, because I was stubborn and I didn't want to stop training, because I was like, if I stop training, then everyone is gonna do this, and I'm gonna like, stay right here, yeah. you know? I want to say like two years passed by of me doing that consistently and then I figured out I was like why am I not doing this like why am I not progressing why am I just plateauing everything and I it was that bro it's like I wasn't giving my body the break that it needed every time that I seshed I was like going ham like all out 100% I was training for like three four hours sometimes even five and then I couldn't, I was sore the next day to the point where I couldn't even do anything. And I got more and more injured doing that. So that was a lesson for me is like, listen to your body, take the rest that you need and be smart with how you uh, stretch out your workout, your training, yeah. Honestly, bro, is looking at the level that I was before and visualizing and imagining like dreaming of the level that I could reach. It's, it's like before I had a mentality of I would see somebody and I'd be like, I can do that. Like, I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to do that better than him. And that really wasn't like working for me is until I started like visualizing myself doing what I cannot do. And that's when I started like trying things. That's when I started like 
getting my own little style instead of like looking at everybody's style and trying to make it my style, if, if that makes sense. And then I started getting my own style. Once I saw that, I started unlocking things and being able to do things that I never thought I could do. That's what like pushes me and pushed me. It's like something new, bro. It's like, it, it like drives me because it's something that is not normal. It's not like, it's like, I'm not just somebody that went after soccer, something that was already like super popular. It's like something that as I was growing, the sport was also growing. And me seeing the sport grow was also making me want to grow. I think that's what it is. The, the best thing in any type of sport is training smart if you want to be in, in it for the long run, bro, because if not, then it's not going to last. Most of my tricks, I unlocked them on my own, and it was just at my house. I would watch videos on Instagram, and I would see people do it, and I would slow-mo it and be like, okay, like, what, what is he doing now? What is he doing now? What is he doing now? I wouldn't just get on the bar and then send it, bro, because then you don't know what you're doing. You can hurt yourself like that. Like, everything is mental at the, at the end of the day. When it comes to dynamics, for example, there's the people that are just like, boom, just send stuff, and it just, like, clicks to them. And then there's the people where it's like, even if you want to send it, you don't send it because you have like this, it's like a mental block. Like you want to send it, but at the same time, you're thinking about like, oh, like I can get hurt. So in order to get past that is training tech, like studying like other athletes, um, getting advice from other athletes and asking them like, yo, bro, like how can I improve this, this and that? and then putting them together and going slowly step, step, step by step until you get it, you know? It's not always about just, you know, jumping over. But the best advice is record yourself and see what you're doing right, see what you're doing wrong. There's athletes that like motivate me, like inspire me to like keep pushing myself to be better as in like watching their skills. And then there's the athletes that inspire me watching like what they have done for the sport so that goes I'll, I'll start off with let's let's say like the first part for example steve steve from ecuador bro crazy kid uh we got i want to say uh thiago uh you bro nikki like thiago nikki bro like i feel like you guys are the reason why there isn't no age limit to anything like there's no excuse like there's people that are always like oh bro like i wish i could have started at a younger age like uh only if i'm like no no bro like there's no age limit bro start now or start never so you guys are like a huge influence tuck tony if it wasn't for him like i feel like i wouldn't have the level that i have now because thanks to him like he always made me like level up other than that i want to say Mauricio, dude, went to Ecuador, opened a whole gym, and I was teaching kids, like, you know, putting everybody on over there. Oh, yeah. uh, we got Daniels, yeah. bro, like, what hasn't he done for the yeah. sport, you know? Yeah. He's a beast as an athlete and trying to grow the sport, you know? He has, dude, bro, thanks for him. Yeah, he's the face of street workout, bro. Yeah. Uh, hey, Daniel, shout out to Daniels. Yeah, bro, shout out to Daniels. So right now, it's, I just got done doing the World Cup and I was like, I saw my performance and I was like, I feel like I, I could still do better. So as in right now, I feel like I'm not done. I feel like I still have more to give. And it's like, I, I, I want to prove to myself that I can do that, that I can keep going and see where it leads to from that, you know, try to do a few comps and see how they go and hope for the Fuck best. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. Thank you. Great. There it is. Oh